Hi guys, I wanted to check whether Hamza has thrown in the towel or is still doing the rounds, checking out his lack of knowledge. When I found his Facebook page, I stumbled across a comment of his praising a person who defended the separation and segregation of females and males at the entrance and the seating arrangement at a London educational institution. Let me quickly weigh in on the segregation issue since it is taking up more time and energy than the debate itself and the constant misrepresentation of incest. Right off the bat, I need to apologize somewhat. You know, I, I used to do my best to remain polite and courteous, but since I'm being insulted and badly insulted at that by so many Muslims, I do not see a need for that any longer which means I do use stronger and more direct language and do not any longer shy away from insulting people who I think deserve it. MDI, the Muslim Debate Initiative, now becomes a political platform, allowing some chauvinists to rant and rave, postulating their 7th century beliefs, which are then picked up willingly by dishonest people such as Hamza and used as propaganda. What apologist Muslims don't seem to grasp or don't want to grasp or unable to grasp is that the laws and legal rights in the UK have grown over hundreds of years and are considered the best there ever was, even if they are not perfect. It's not a matter of black or white or digital, as some call it, and to use the word correctly for once, more nuanced. That is, the rights of person A end exactly where the rights of person B begin. So when living in another country, I inform myself what the local culture is and what the local norms and customs are. Just as I adhere to driving on the correct side of the road, I also learn about dress code, protocol, formalities. I mean, in, in Thailand, I quickly learn not to touch the head of a child or to not point my feet at a Buddha when seated. This is known as etiquette and shows the due respect for the local culture I am visiting or joining. Just as I don't munch a sandwich in public during Ramadan in Muscat, I don't ogle at women on a nudist beach, and I bring flowers for my girlfriend's mother in Caracas. It is the art of being local, worldwide. You adapt to the environment you live in and don't expect the environment to adapt to you. The Quran actually says this quite nicely in 3118, Allah does not love the arrogant boaster. Hamza does not seem to know this sentence and publicly lauds the author of a little gem justifying gender segregation in the UK on his public Facebook page. When I, when I found this entry, I got so bad that I wrote this down just a, just a few minutes. The people in the UK have decided over the centuries that this is the form and fashion they would like to organize their social lives together in their country. These conventions are not static. It does not mean that if a person decides to shower in the nude, that this person will spend the entire day in the nude. It does not mean that if a person decides to wear a suit and tie to work, that this person will wear this suit and tie all the time. It also does not mean that the man and the woman who do not know each other but peacefully sit next to each other in the opera also go to the toilet together. These are the nuanced social norms which seem too complex for some people. Like for someone, I mean, this guy goes by the Spanish name Andalusi, and he seems frightfully two-dimensional. Reading the text he wrote, I can only conclude that Andalusi is a primitive bigot who claims that the inhabitants of the UK should justify the concept of equality as though this were some optional extra on a car. Like, do you really need this? Who does he think he is? Like. The, the woman who got up during a Q&A at the debate and complained and whined that her personal feelings were not pandered to in the public arena in the UK. Equality also gives you the right to leave. Does the UK need these kind of people? Why do they think their backwards attitude and cultural concept should play a role in a modern age UK or Europe? 
The guy with the Andalusi name singles out liberals and atheists. Atheists? Atheists are the opposite of theists who believe there is evidence for the existence of a god. And atheists don't. And, and that's all. That's it. Atheists don't silently approve of any gender segregation, but that there is no evidence for the existence of a god. And one would think that this is easy to understand and digest, but superficial simpletons like our favorite Hamza and this Spanish person simply don't get it. His incredibly long and chaotic unstructured sentence I mean, contains so many propaganda catchphrases I'm sure you must have learned this art of inserting as much nonsense as possible into one sentence well, at some communist convention 30 years ago. Segregation is nothing complex or in need of special consideration and investigation. It's, it's simply the process of separating people into groups by certain criteria, which in public is illegal. So the, the concept of equality is laid down in the Human Rights Convention. The UK does not have a single book or text as constitution. Even though it was clear that equality constitutes a core value of the UK constitutional order, and as stated by, for example, Baroness Hale, democracy is founded on the principle that each individual has equal value and was embedded in common law and jurisprudence. It was, it was only in the Equality Act of 2010 which unambiguously defined what was really meant by equality and pertinent in this case, gender equality. What does this mean? It means that no person as part of a group can be segregated or singled out, whether at work or in the public arena or whatever. This means that a Muslim can worship their God or buy their food and drink that they want. A Catholic in Kabul can't. That is the difference. What does it not mean? It does not mean that human rights can be curbed. Police can't simply conduct a strip search in the street. People can't have sex in the street, as that would interfere with the rights of others. So it's a balanced, quite complex system, something a primitive simpleton might not be able to comprehend. How can a person explain how gender segregation is unequal? Is this a coherent question which a person with both brain cells functioning would ask? How can how can this jerk ask UK residents to justify the concept of equality in their own country? Justify? For this cretin? I mean, that'll be the day. Learned reality and, and what an advanced culture is. There were no protestations regarding the event, but the illegal entrance queues and separation into seating areas by gender. Does the, I mean, anyway, does the Quran specify anywhere that men and women need to be seated away from each other all the time? No. So that makes it not a religious, but a cultural issue. If a person, especially a Muslim apologist, is intellectually bankrupt and can't come up with factual arguments, they come up either with, with Hitler or Islamophobia. And this incredibly gifted person makes it one better. It is not only Islamophobia, but also a prejudice on top of it, not just the fear. (laughs) How does one manage to get so much stupidity, dishonesty and propaganda into one single sentence? But (laughs) I've just established that this is not about religion at all, but the stubborn and egotistical insistence of importing a foreign cultural behavior pattern, not more. Do I hear Aira fanboys enthusiastically applauding anyway? Or are they thumping their chests? Are they done pointing out the physical differences between men and women? Ah, boy. I mean, this, this seems to be the, the end of the quote now by the Spanish person, and now Hamza takes over. He starts off with a lie. No, Dr. Dawkins was not angry. Angry at a debate but the illegal practice of imposing backward cultural superstitions on participants of a public debate at a venue in a UK university. The rules and regulations at UCL clearly stipulate what the use of the premises entail, and even if they don't like it, this also applies to Muslims and the IERA. 
Ah, it seems the end quote marks were a premature placement. So hmm. it's still the moronic simpleton Abdullah from Spain, I suppose, who now says that organizers recommended and suggested seating areas. In any case, why? Was there a separate entrance for women or not? Was there a separate seating area for women or not? I mean, carrying a firearm in the UK is most likely illegal, regardless of whether it's been used for a crime or not. And people need to have and pay for a TV license, even if they only watch Islam TV day and night. It is not at your discretion what speed you are doing on the M25. This is part of living in a social environment in the 21st century in the UK. Take it or lump it. Whether you change the name, I mean, the fact that gender segregation happened remains. Of course, Saira will deny this and it will be difficult to prove the queuing issue if there were no cameras. And we need to rely on personal testimony by Muslims and non-Muslims alike. I mean, does this person that really pretend to know that it was only atheists who protested the illegal seating arrangements? On what grounds? Do, do people now have a label on their forehead and everyone who protested was registered? Ah, the dishonesty has no bounds. I mean, Krauss not only threatened to walk out, but actually did walk out. Let's keep with the fact, shall we? And wh why, do, why does the writer of this trash hate Dr. Dawkins so much? Why is anyone who dares to speak up for justice and equality immediately branded a liberal? This person should be so ashamed for taking a stand against law-abiding citizens who uphold the culture achievements of their society, a society which has left behind the days when women were treated as objects like tilth, where men were the caretakers and women had no say. Today, we have empowered women who decide and men do as they are told, where women are in charge of a large jet and the men serve the drinks. That is reality. That is equality. And that is where a person can perform in the business world according to capability and not bra size. Where the simple, no, I do not want to have sex with you, should be sufficient and not layers and layers of black cloth hiding a woman from view because men are too primitive to control themselves. Next, this primitive bigot now gets outright childish. Can the public space be monitored by CCTV? Yes. Does that apply to my toilet? Does the concept of a private sphere not you know, just ring a bell? Is there a difference between public and private? Is that so difficult to take on board? The mentioning of some schools being segregated is ironic since, I mean, it's exactly the reason for gender stereotypes and the lack of social integration. And this is the result. We now come to the highlight of this, this, this thing, the, the most stupid question of the year. How is gender segregation an infringement of equality? I mean, what IQ does it take to ask a question like this? How is murder an infringement of the right to live? It, I mean, it leaves me speechless. There's, there's nothing I can add or comment to this. I mean, this is remarkable. I mean, it still manages to go downhill somewhat, but not much, as the next question only solidifies the level of intelligence. I mean, the, the, the entire integrity and general contempt for humans and such a degree of misogyny I have rarely seen before in my life. Yes, sure, why indeed are humans equal? Just because pitiful members of the human species want slaves and concubines, anyone should be able to do what they want? This person is so ridiculously ignorant and so stupid that the difference between a human physique and human rights are unclear and will always remain a mystery to them. Let's have all men with blonde hair and blue eyes take a step back and the rest please march to the right and into the waiting trains. I, I, mean, I honestly thought we'd left those barbaric times behind and could concentrate on improving the cohabitation of humans on this tiny planet. 
And then idiots like this show up and prove that you can get a person out of the Bronze Age, but you can't always get the Bronze Age out of the person. Beam me up, Scotty. There's no intelligent life down here. And thanks for your time.